A URL session is designed to access network beyond your user's device. Doing so takes time, whether to upload data or respond to a chat message, and that's time that the user can be doing other things. This is where concurrency comes to play. Now, you may already have experience with concurrency, then by all means, feel free to skip this episode. But if you are new to concurrency, then definitely follow along. In a nutshell, concurrency means doing multiple things at once. When we write our code, that code can be translated into a single path of execution. We may have lots of objects communicating with each other, but if you just follow that path of execution, you'll see that it follows a linear path. This is evident when you set a breakpoint in the debugger and then step through each line of code. You can think of a path of execution as a thread. In fact, we, we write all of our code in what is known as the main thread. This is, where, this is the thread that runs our code, but also the code that manage, manages the user interface as well. As you add threads to your code, you actually have more paths of execution. This means you can do multiple things at once. One thread can be responding to user input and another thread can be downloading files across the network. A thread runs on a CPU core. The more cores that a device has, the more threads that can be run at the same time. If there are more threads than resources to run them, the CPU will switch between them. One moment a thread is just trucking along, drawing a circle on the screen, and the next moment it's asleep. Moments later, it's awake, unaware that it was ever asleep. Computers process information so fast we can't see the processing. If we could process things as fast as a computer, then using a com computer would appear choppy and stuttering as all the various threads started and stopped. Who knows, maybe hundreds of years in the future whereby people have augmented their brains to process information as fast as computers, our, our modern software will look like the first movies that, would, that were ever made. They probably wonder how we could be so taken with computers. But as is, to us, the thread switching experience is seamless. So you've seen how code runs on threads and you learned how we work on the main thread. This is where our user interface updates. But what happens if we do too much work on the main thread? To find out, follow along with this demo. To get started, create a new project in Xcode. Select the single view app project template. Give it the name concurrency test and make sure to add an organization identifier if you don't have one. Also, make sure the language is set to Swift and the user interface set to Swift UI. Then click Next, choose a location, and then Create. When your project is created, open the content view. We need to create a simple UI. Now add the following code. This creates a simple date picker with a button underneath it. Build and run. Tap the button and you'll see that you can spin the picker. This is because the button doesn't do anything. Now add the following method.
This calculates whether a number is prime or not. We're not looking for efficiency here. We're looking just to do a lot of work. Now add the following. This will iterate over a million numbers, determining whether it is prime or not. Now update your button. Let's see this in action. Build and run. Now tap the Calculate Primes button. In the console, you'll see the results of the operation, but if you try to change the date in the date picker, you'll see that you can't. The button is locked up as well. Your interface is essentially locked until the operation is complete. Since the user doesn't have a console, they'll think that the application has crashed, being that the interface is unresponsive. You may think about adding a progress bar, but that wouldn't update as well. You've effectively locked up the UI until the operation is finished. There is a way to fix it, which we'll cover in the next episode.